everybody, welcome to Kirby Connects, as we are now in week 21, and this year is just flying by, as we're reading through the Bible together chronologically. In the room is Ben Miller, woo. Emery Sears, hey, hey. Don Myers, woo. Don Myers woo. and uh, Clayton Kerr. And so we're going to talk to you. <laughs> what wow. was that? Put it in, in the comments. What was, was worse? At, Ooh, or, woo. Oh, I'm sorry. Half, half the room is about relaxed. to nod off, but that's all right. Mm. Hey, guys, we were talking about movies here just a minute ago. Oh, Worst no. movie you've ever seen? Oh, I got it. Got it. Got it. Go Not even on a spiritual level. No. Noah with Russell Crowe. That, By, was, that was bad. I tried to make theologically Lene, bad, acting yeah. bad, theologically bad, bad, acting bad, bad, graphics bad, story special bad, special effects. Didn't I tried to make like Lene watch it you know a few what? months ago because I saw it come on Amazon Prime. I was like, "This is so bad, you have to watch it." Uh, and I got through like the first. This is so bad. You made your wife watch. Well, something right, because it's just on like, the premise. It's, this is it's so, so bad. bad. It was, so I thought good. it. We're going to waste funny. two hours of no, our listen, life. No, listen, get your point. Let me finish the story because I made it through 15 minutes of the movie. And I was like, I can't do this anymore. I'm, I'm done. I don't know how I did it the first Aren't time. Aren't there <laughs> biblical characters that did not live at the same time? Right. Yeah. yeah. Present at the same time. Yeah. yeah. Clay, yeah. what's your... Mad Max. Mad Max. Oh. oh. I can't... Uh, what, what, two that guys. Kind of, two, two, wasn't that kind two of weird? Guys, that was that what are talking about? In the desert, like... Which I, one? Listen, I love action. I love cars. I love chase. Yeah. All that stuff. It was just... Terrible. Even you beyond the Thunderdome, no, you didn't I get it. it. I didn't you didn't. Get I wouldn't put that. Now I will. Yeah, I will. So we should have a higher standard of uh, the, you, of movie music, watching. Uh, music production. Mine was. Um, mine was Brother, Where Art Thou? I just. Billy. Oh what? my goodness! Yes. You're literally throwing my favorite yes. movie. At the watch. end of that movie, I, I and I must have not got it because of my judging my response. But at the end of that movie, I literally banged my head off the floor in my living room and said, <laughs> "I can't have that three hours of my life back." <laughs> I hated Brother Where Art. Oh like George my Clooney man! Singing. I love George Clooney. But I hated Brother Where Art Thou. Really? Ticket to Paradise? Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> I understand oh, you, George. Yeah, just a dad of... He hated so much he remembers <laughs> quotes from it. No, no. Man, Brother Where Art Thou, man. I just... I just... Man, man I, that movie couldn't, couldn't get. I like the song yeah. "Man of Sorrows." I like to. Yeah, I like the soundtrack. Gotta, gotta okay. This. Yeah, okay. So yeah, I, <laughs> absolutely. Do better. Waterworld. Kevin Costner. I thought that was decent too. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Come on, guys! I remember and going. Be better than oh this. wow! <laughs> We're gonna have to have movie night. <laughs> Waterworld. You didn't like yeah, Waterworld. Yeah, really Never bad, has so much money words. been Bring spent on words. three hours of mediocrity. Get out of the water <laughs> at any point <laughs> in the three no, hours. No, you didn't get it. Get back no, to it. No, it was so it. boring. And people I actually get Waterworld and Mad Max like that. The, the theme plots are alike. kind, kind same, of same kind of a same yeah. same They're idea. Alike. Kevin Costner got paid a boatload of money for that, and people were outraged at how much money he got paid for acting so badly. Mm. It was terrible wow. and really long, long and it's terrible, so funny. Long. not good. Isn't it funny, funny how we are? What about you, Pastor? Oh, now let's load it up. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, everybody's now Googling, thinking about their dreams. So let's just jump into uh, this. No, 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 no. Uh, you, you can't, can't share your, the, the, the worst movie the, ever. Because we're, we're gaining insight into one another. Yeah. You know, um, I'm if if the movie doesn't hook me in the first 12, 15 minutes, mm -hmm. you know, and I didn't pay money to go see it, I yeah. just walk away from it. Yeah. So there's a, there's a lot I can't really tell because yeah. there's a lot of movies. Must that be the I, wisdom of age. I just go. <laughs> yeah. that way. I, it's efficiency. Yeah, <laughs> it's just you know it's not going anywhere that I really want to go. So yeah. I'm just I'm out. But see, at great risk to my own personal safety, I'm gonna say if I used that for the latest Avatar movie, I would have never seen the good part because they could have cut the first 45 minutes, mm. and the movie still. I haven't seen great. it yet. I liked Avatar. I liked the second one. I liked the first one. I, I, I liked it. Starting at about 45 minutes, amazing. Like first 45 <laughs> minutes, I'm like, 
I think scariest movie yeah. ever was I think Swamp Thing when I was like four years old in black and white. <laughs> I remember it's coming out of the. I've seen. Don is of now it. acting it out here yeah. in the room. I've seen. He's clips out of, of his it. chair. That's the Swamp Thing. Arms out. Swamp thing. The swamp thing. Swamp Thing. Wish circa, you could what be. What is it? Circa 1952. Probably. You know? Wish you could be swamp here. Thing in black and white. Well, let's turn our attention to God's word. All yes. right. Oh, so man. we're kind of wrapping up. <laughs> Solomon's life, and uh, it certainly <coughs> it certainly is better than some of the bad movies were was was, 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 was acting here. So Solomon asks for wisdom. He becomes king at a young age. He's not the number one son of David. Mm-hmm. He's like third in line, and so uh, there would be this kind of battle. So he's he's now been you know crowned as king, and he's established his rule. And so he asked God for wisdom, which is a very God-centered, Christ-like thing to do. And God not only said, I'm going to bless you with wisdom, but I'm going to bless you with prosperity as well. Yeah. All right? Mm -hmm. And usually in Scripture and in life, if you are a wise person, good blessings do follow. Right. You know? And... um, and we know that good gifts come from the Lord and that kind of thing. So Solomon, he asks for wisdom. If you go over a couple of chapters, uh, and, and then we'll kind of skip back, but um, this his wisdom is on display in a couple of different situations. First of all, a uh, to um, prostitutes, the Bible says, <laughs> comes to the king to have an argument settled. They lived yep. in the same brothel. They lived in the right. same home. And one had a baby four days earlier, and the other one mm-hmm. lost the baby. But both claimed that the baby was theirs. Mm-hmm. Yep. And so they went to Solomon and all of his wisdom to decide what what to do. Who gets the baby? Now, how would you have answered that? Just like Solomon. <laughs> <laughs> sure, sure. I've already read it. Sure. <laughs> yeah, Come fair. on, I know what to say sure. here. <laughs> no problem. Sure, smart. I got this one. Go <laughs> well, back in the swamp, swamp thing. And, uh, most of us would have said, you know, let's let's look at the DNA evidence. Right. You know, most of it would. Ask, he didn't even ask a question. Right. Mm-hmm. No. If I remember the story. He didn't even ask a question. Probably thought about it for a second or two. Yeah. And then thought about, you know, a true mom would protect her child. Mm-hmm. So he said, get a sword, cut the baby in two, and give one half to each each mom, and that'll settle the issue. Yep. And the real mom spoke up and said, no, King, don't do that. Yeah. And then the mom who, or the prostitute who was the mom said, yes, do it, do mm-hmm. it, do it, because she was spiteful and angry. And so the word of that wisdom, like, and we all would have gone, that's brilliant. Mm-hmm. And in the day of pre and before DNA testing, and, you know, obviously there were no eyewitnesses to this thing. And so it was like his wisdom was just on display. And those who knew that he had prayed for wisdom just were like, oh, man, God is with him. Um, yeah. It shows like the nature of his wisdom because mm-hmm. it's not it's not like that was a fact based knowledge or or anything yeah. like that. Like he read people, he read the situation, mm-hmm. he didn't call witnesses, mm-hmm. but it was intuitive to himself. Yeah. Where it doesn't I, feel like I he could have explained it. I and I think that really is a valuable component of this that he was able to read them because honestly, it, like it could have went different. They could have both been very <laughs> right, very yeah. uh. Remorseful. Oh, no, they yeah. could have been oh, both yeah. been very bad. Well, okay, fine. Right, if right. I can't, they could have both mm-hmm. said what the bad one did. But right. I think he had the wisdom to be or able to, yeah. to discern and read that yeah. this person seems distraught over the child. This person seems very self-centered. Yeah. And this would work. And Solomon is a very young man. Yeah. And I think a good prayer for parents to teach their children to pray, for young parents to pray, for midlife people to pray, for older people to pray is God, give me wisdom beyond my years. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Give mm-hmm. me wisdom. I prayed that. I still pray that prayer, <coughs> especially told, as a told young that, pastor. We're asked to give We're said to, to, to ask God to give us wisdom and yes. give us generously yes. without finding fault. Yep. But, doesn't yeah, doesn't upbring, doesn't doesn't yeah. chide us for that prayer yeah. request. Yeah. You know. The place that I love um, in the whole prayer of Solomon was just that 
because I've always thought that wisdom, 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 and then it just kind of fell on deaf ears for me after you, you know, Solomon, wisdom. Yeah, I, I got mm-hmm. it. I've heard it a oh, right. thousand times. But when I read it this time, and it wasn't in this reading, it was in a couple weeks ago readings, whenever he said, help me, Lord. Mm-hmm. I need your help, Lord, to to go with me and lead yeah. these people Who to do the work you've people. given. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it was like, and I was like, and then after that, the Lord said, you have asked him for, you've asked for wisdom. And he defined what he had asked for. And I was like, oh man, like that, at least for my, another angle from my brain, it helped me find a place that said, Understand wisdom what? is asking for the Lord's help to do what he's called you to do. Yeah. Like that's, like that's, yeah. w- that's wisdom. Is what some, then the Lord says, you ask that. for wisdom. Yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. And yeah, it's interesting that, so you brought up that he, he's young. So the, the classical interpretation interpretation of wisdom is that it's gained over time. Yeah. Uh, and he didn't ask him for information. <laughs> he asked him for wisdom. So the wisdom came from God at a time when somebody his age would, would truly not have had wisdom by the definition of wisdom, which is living out experiences over time. Let's see where it goes. Mm-hmm. So it's the, yeah, kind of like the right application of, of information to life is what wisdom yeah. truly is. Yeah. yeah. So then we read about Dave, uh, Solomon picking up the mantle of David's vision to build the temple, and this is like opulent. It this is. Mm-hmm. is like over the top. Oh my word! It's really nice too. Yeah. Really nice. <laughs> In addition to being opulent, <laughs> yeah, it's really nice. It's fancy. It's very pretty. Very pretty. You know, we only let him out of this swamp every time. <laughs> It's opulent. It's opulent. It's opulent. It's opulent. It's opulent. How do I use a big word for that? Oh, I love it. But look, love he builds it, it over 150,000 <laughs> people over seven years took to build this oh. thing. And if you just kind of read about its, its size, uh, how mm-hmm. much was overlaid with gold. Mm-hmm. And uh, I remember in Russia when I went 20 years ago now, but... I, it was the first time I really saw buildings that had gold overlay on it. Mm-hmm. And I couldn't tell if it was copper, if it was gold, if it was just, you know, gold paint. And the rule of thumb was if it looks like gold <laughs> and it's on a church, it is gold. Yeah. You know? And so um, it was just this opulent thing. Um, 23 tons of fine Ooh. gold. 23 tons a fine gold. How That's much? A lot. How much? How much? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <And we're back. laughs> how much is gold an ounce? Got it's over two thousand bucks an ounce. Two thousand bucks an ounce. Yep. So times sixteen. Uh, a lot. Times two, thirty-two. <laughs> One hundred thirty-two thousand. No, thirty-two thousand at that. Okay. Sixteen times two is thirty-two. Did you so. say sixteen thousand or sixteen hundred? 2,000 2, times 16 ounces, okay. so 32,000. So that's in a pound. Yeah. Multiply mm-hmm. that out by how many pounds are in a ton? 2,000. A lot. Times 23. <laughs> times 23. <laughs> times many. Quick math. We got the answer. 23. Is how Boom. much? It's such a big number. It goes to that thing on a calculator. Oh, one, 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 nine to the ninth hold up, power. Hold up. To the ninth one power. Bill- billion, 1.5 billion. Let's round it out a little bit. Make it easy. I think it's more than that. Maybe, I missed, a, maybe well, I missed a number hey, in there. Hey, it's a lot. It's a lot. It's, but it's a number so big, he's got a letter correct. in it. It's very <laughs> <big. laughs> yeah, true as usual. But he builds, and then and then uh, he builds his he palace, <laughs> which is even there. bigger than the temple that David mm. envisioned. And then uh, he built his home. And Solomon really might have wanted to build a bigger temple, but he mm-hmm. felt compelled to honor his father. Through yep. building what, believing what God gave him, but it took 13 years to build the palace, and uh, there were other halls in the Hall of Justice. Uh, Superman wasn't there, but uh, then the day the Ark of the Covenant, everything was finished, and the Ark of the Covenant was brought back into the temple, and all of Israel is there, mm-hmm. and world leaders, I would imagine, even even can, and Solomon praises the Lord. And praise this beautiful prayer of dedication, um, part of which we alluded to 20-something years ago when we moved into this building, and um, and it was it, it was just <coughs> it was just great. Solomon uh, kind of wraps up his life with many achievements. He was a master builder. 
uh, building cities and fortified cities, very strategic. He would make um, uh, distribution points. So, you know, we all see these big trucking depots where trucks come in. Yep. Well, Solomon had that in mind thousands of years ago. He made these distribution points where people can go and exchange and, and uh, help the economic area so that yeah. he could have um, more wealth. Then you read the story about the Queen of Sheba, mm -hmm. right? It's a great story. And she comes with riddles, and I didn't really understand the whole riddle thing, so I did a little deep dive into the riddle. And the riddle was, was very common in that day where you would kind of um, spar with people mentally, yeah. and especially kings and, and people who were heads of leaders of military. Mm -hmm. The idea was, if I can outwit you with a riddle, or yeah. several riddles, then I should be able to outwit you on the battlefield. If all things being equal, mm -hmm. if I'm smarter than you Makes are, sense. you know, we'll, we'll do that. And so, and she came, I think, as an antagonist and left as an admirer because mm -hmm. she saw his wisdom on display. Yeah, it's cool to, cool to see even how Uncle Donald said that, like, asking God for leadership gained the admiration of everybody around them. The direction that so that Solomon went because of God's leadership made him one of like the head most lead world leaders that has ever existed at any point in history and gained that renown. I think the, the cool thing is uh, kind of an application for today. She comes away saying, Praise the Lord your God who delights uh, in you and has placed you on the throne as king to rule for him because God loves Israel and desires the kingdom. So that she didn't totally come away just saying, you are an amazing mm -hmm. guy. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> the, your God mm -hmm. is an amazing God. So the things that God allows us to do and to do well should point to the God who has given them to us mm -hmm. to do well and not just to ourselves. So let me just kind of read a little bit about Solomon's prosperity and, and just kind of give you a little bit of what it leads up to. He built a huge force of chariots and horses, 1,400 chariots, 12,000 horses. He stationed them in the chariot cities, and some of them near Jerusalem. He made silver and gold plentiful in, in Jerusalem as stone, and valuable cedar timber as common as sycamore fig trees that grow in the foothills of Judah. That would be like the grass in our front yard. Solomon's, um, Solomon's horses were imported from Egypt and from Sicilia, and the king's travel traders acquired them from uh, Sicilia and st at a standard price. And at the time, the chariots of Egypt could be purchased for 600 pieces of silver, horses for 150 pieces of silver, and then they were exported to the king of the Hittites and the king of Aram. And so he's making money off buying the horses, yep. he's making money off selling the horses, yep. he's getting money because he keeps raising the taxes of the people. All over the place. And for a guy who had great wisdom, he did not understand the laws or the principles of taxation, and he begins to sow this seed of unrest in the nation of Israel. It's a unified nation, but it is now starting to splinter because of the heavy taxation and you know wealth is now concentrated into the hands of the few and it is just this time of uh, very disgruntledness and it leads the way for the divided kingdom so that's for next week keep reading and have a great week don will be out of the swamp uh, ben will help these old guys find we'll out what some, a we'll good better, movie we'll is. We'll better opinions by next week. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody have a great day. We'll see you in church on Sunday.